Love forgetting my, the name of my own book club. Hot take, I don't really like I am not gonna tell you what I'm reading. Why? Because I'm Rachel, this is Let Me in the Library, and today we're gonna do my June TBR. But first off, thank you very much for a thousand subscribers. What the hell? Thank you guys so much. Every single person who has subscribed to this channel has made this channel what it is, and all of your supportive comments really mean the world to me. I've had so much fun, and I've made some of the best friends here. Thank you, everybody. As cool as it is to see a little K, right there next to the numbers on my channel. I especially am just really feeling the love because on the day I hit 1k I had so many friends that were hyping me up and just making me feel so amazing. So if you're ever thinking about joining booktube and you think this is something that you want to do, I highly recommend just getting started. I might have something really exciting to announce in another video coming soon, so keep your eye out for that. And then the other thing that I wanted to briefly mention before we get into the actual video is today's sponsor. So today I want to say a special thank you to Anna Luisa. They sent me these two pieces. This is like the Margot, which looks very, very sparkly, but it's actually just a piece of gold that's sort of like punctured and textured in such a way that makes it incredibly sparkly and it totally jumped out at me right away. It's very cute. And then I also have this Isadora Sun set and you can either just wear it as is like this or you can wear it with all of the kind of like layered little necklaces that come with it. And considering that so much of the jewelry that I currently have is like Claire's costume jewelry from Forever 21 type stuff, I was like, it's kind of time for an upgrade to get something a little bit more mature that still feels fun. They have a 365 day warranty and there's always something for everybody on this website for people who want something more subtle or people who want something a little bit fancier. There's probably something for everybody here. So a lot of their jewelry is very affordable. Uh, these pieces are something like 30 something dollars and they have like the very well done clasps in the back. Uh, nobody knows this on booktube, but I actually used to do jewelry making for a while, so I kind of know what I'm talking about a little bit. The fact that they are sustainably made, they are affordable, they are really nice quality, I think that's kind of everything that you want in a piece of jewelry, and they look nice. So everything starts at $39 and there is no markup for a luxury brand or anything like that, it's just exactly what it's worth. Also, for those of you out there who are like, whoa, cute, I want one, wouldn't it be cool if I see saved 10% off of my order, look no further because Ana Luisa is not just a sustainable, fashionable jewelry maker. Uh, they are comedians because my discount code is LETME10. So that is the most incredible discount code I've ever heard in my life. Use the code LETME10 if you want to buy something off of Ana Luisa either for yourself as a treat or if you want to give something to a loved one. These make really nice gifts and I already really love these. Thank you so much again Ana Luisa for sending me that stuff and now let's get right into the TBR. We have a really really fun TBR today because I have my regular dice game. I also have the read Ghibli readathon to talk about. So if you're brand new here, I do a TBR every month and it's a game in which I roll some 20-sided dice. So I've been rolling six 20-sided dice and every time that I do, I see what it lands on and that corresponds to some prompts that I have laid out ahead of time. You can see those over here or in the description down below. They never change. And depending on what I roll, that tells me what I will read for the month. So let's get right in and see what I rolled this month. Okay, so we have a 4, a 14, two 15s, a 10, and a 19. Right, a 4 is a roll d4 for four piles. I think that's a good one. 10 is the Play the Bogopolathon board, which is fun. 14 is an Own Voices book. And 15 is Sasha Picks, which we haven't had in a while. And the last one is a friend's recommendation. So that's perfect, actually. I think we're gonna keep all of these. Welcome back. So let's talk about what I rolled and what that means. So the first thing that I rolled was a four, which means that I take a little four-sided dice and I roll that. So I have four piles laid out in front of me and I basically correspond each pile one through four. So that way, whenever I roll, that tells me which stack of books that I'm gonna read. The first one is a bunch of D&D handbooks that I wanna read to 
prep for possibly DMing. Then I have this book which is called Crimes and Math Demeanors and it's a bunch of murder mysteries but you solve it with math equations. Um, and then I have Artemis by Andy Weir which I started and never finished. And I also have special topics in Calamity Physics which is recommended to me based on loving the swallows. So I'm going to roll my four-sided dice and whatever number it lands on, one, two, three, four, that's the pile that I will be reading. We got a three, which means I'm going to read Artemis. Awesome. So thanks to that dice roll, I'm going to be reading Artemis by Andy Weir. This is Andy Weir's second book after The Martian and before Project Hail Mary, which I'll also be reading this month. Artemis is a really cool story about this young woman who is on the moon base with a whole bunch of other folks, and she kind of is planning this sort of heist. Um, and it's a very interesting setup because of the way that only rich people can really bring stuff to the moon, considering how much money it costs to bring stuff up there. But she is sort of living in poverty on the moon, and she decides that this is like this one big chance to really get the kind of life that she wants and deserves and needs. So she's going to pull off this heist on the moon. What's not to love? I love Andy Weir and I think this is going to be a really great book. Next up, I got a 10, which means that I played the Bogopolathon board. So Becca always has this TBR game for the Bogopolathon and from there I basically used two 20-sided dice for all 40 spaces on the board and I rolled those and I ended up getting an eight. From there I had to figure out what that means on the Bogopolathon board and I ended up on foiled cover. So I was a little bit worried on what this would be but then I realized that this was actually the perfect book for the Winers Book Club pick from last month that we're still doing our live show for this month that I need to finish. So this is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I talked about this a little bit last month already, and this is a story that takes place in World War II, and it has two sisters with very different lives. Some people really love it, but it's really tragic. So I need to hurry up and read this as well. But also while I'm talking about The Winers Book Club, our other book club pick for June is Darling, which is Kay Ankrum's brand new book that is coming out later this month. We are planning to read this and discuss it probably at the very beginning of July. But Darling is a Peter Pan retelling, and it sort of takes Peter Pan and puts it in the modern day. So rather than going to Neverland, I think it's more about folks that are in, like, the underground of London. I've heard it gives you this major plot twist that totally changes everything, so I'm really excited to see what Kay Ankrum does with this. The next prompt I got was for an Own Voices book based on the 14 that I rolled, and so what I'm going to be reading for that is Dial A for Aunties. From what I've read of this so far, this is very, very accurate. Um, and the author is Chinese Indonesian as well. So this is a really fun story. This is about the main girl, Medi, who goes on a blind date that goes totally wrong. And it's a whole circus of events that happen from there because her aunties get involved in trying to cover up the murder that she accidentally committed of this guy. And meanwhile, they're also planning a wedding that they're all a part of. So they end up kind of like hiding the body as they're trying to take care of the wedding and everything else too. So this is definitely going to be a really fun one, highly anticipated, and I'm really excited to read this. And I hope that other folks will pick it up as well. Next up, I rolled two 15s, which means that my cat Sasha picks the books. <laughs> gotten this prompt in a while, but the two prompts that she ended up landing on were Dearly, which is a collection of Margaret Atwood poems, and Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong, which I've been definitely eyeing for a while. This one is more of a collection of essays about the Asian American experience, and also I wanted to pick this up in general because I really do like Margaret Atwood's writing, um, but I haven't really explored poetry very much and I recently saw a lot of friends doing some really cool poetry videos and talking about poems, so I thought it was a good time to pick this up. Okay, the last thing I rolled was a 19 and this is sort of a cop-out, but the 19 is a book recommendation from a friend. I am not going to tell you what I'm reading. Why? Because I'm going to basically explain this in a video that's coming out on Sunday, but I'm going to be doing something very special this month and the book will come from there. I can't really say anything else right now, but it's going to be really fun. I promise it will be worth it, but I'm not going to tell you what I'm reading for that. But I will tell you everything else that I'm reading for 
everything else this month. I am actually a host for the Studio Ghibli Readathon along with seven other friends and it's really fun. I will link my announcement video if you haven't seen it already. It is not too late to join. We would love to have you. Um, and the three books that I already talked about in that TBR video are these. Um, I have Howl's Moving Castle, which is the group book. Really excited about this. Really, really happy about this. Iris, thank you again so much for sending this to me like a year ago. I promise I'm finally actually going to get to it. So very happy about this. Um, and then I also have Hanakimi, which is for the book that you kind of like read all in one sitting. Um, and this is the group book pick for the uh, host club, my own book club. Love forgetting my, the name of my own book club. Uh, this is for the host club. We are reading one volume of Hanakimi, which is the story about a girl who is like a pole vaulting person but she can only get into this school if she disguises herself as a boy so it's basically like she's the man um so we're doing one volume of this and we're doing three volumes of Oran High School Host Club um hot take I don't really like Oran High School Host Club but I'm excited to talk about it with everybody because I know it's nostalgia for a lot of folks um and then I'm also going to be reading a book from my childhood that I really loved which is the Princess Academy which is a story about some girls who end up having to go to this special school where a prince is going to come and pick his bride from this area as was prophesized but there's a lot going on with the competition between the girls and also something possibly more sinister with the magic that's in that place um and the main girl is sort of like a person who wanted to work in the rock quarry nearby and ends up in this academy instead. Um, and I remember this being a lot about sisterhood, but I really don't remember too much about what happened in the story. I just remember loving it so much. So these are the prompts that I'm doing for the Spirited Away TBR card um, that I kind of explained better in the announcement video. But there is also like a giant bingo board that Christine spent a lot of time on. And I won't really talk about what all of these books are about, but I'm going to put them over here and just show you how I'm filling out the big bingo board. These are not for certain because I put way too many books on my TBR already, but just if they happen, this is what they will be. So I will just tell you about some of them here. Um, other ones are much more tentative. So I'm going to be reading Fox 8, which is a really short, really cute book. This is a book by George Saunders who wrote Lincoln and the Bardo, which I actually really did not like. But Fox 8 is a totally different kind of story and it's really cute. It's from the perspective of a fox who learned to speak English from listening to humans tell each other bedtime stories at night. Okay, I was reading this on live reading sprints and I was so happy because it was so funny. I was laughing my butt off on mute. And then I got to a really sad part and then the sprints ended. So I need to see what happens in the rest of this book, but this has been on my TBR for the longest time. It is so short. It is less than 50 pages. So I will absolutely be reading this this month. I'm also going to be reading some Heartstopper. Um, these are very, very popular web comics. I have been meaning to read these for a very long time. And there's actually an Alice Oseman read-along going on right now, hosted by Katie from Katie Can't Read and Elise from The Petite Punk. So they are doing all of the Oseman verse for the entire summer. I don't know how much of that I'm going to participate, but I have been meaning to read these for the longest time. This is a story about uh, Nick and Charlie, one of which, I don't know which, um, is openly gay and the other of which is not. And I think that they kind of go from strangers to friends to lovers and it's supposed to be very cute. So really excited about it. I'm also going to be reading Queen of Nothing, which is the last book in the Cruel Prince series because I am going to be on the live show to talk about this with Christine from the Roomies Digest and Nicole from Bon Bon Reads. We had a really fun discussion last time about the Wicked King and I'm really excited to see how everything wraps up. I'll also be hopefully picking up On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, which is the 20-something book club pick for this month. This is a story uh, about a young man who basically is writing all these stories to his mother, but his mother really can't read all of his letters. So it's sort of him just trying to explain um, all of these complicated emotions that he feels and trying to reconcile this relationship with his mother. I'm also planning on rereading The Midnight Library, which I really loved. I read that back in February and as soon as I finished it, I wanted to reread it, but I had other things on the TBR at the time, so I finally got my hold back. The Midnight Library is a story about all of the different possible lives that a person could lead based on the different decisions that they make, which has always been a really big thing for me. And it's sort of the idea of these different multiverses that you possibly could have um, experienced yourself. The main character is prepared to commit suicide and she ends up in this sort of like magical ethereal midnight library um, and from there she realizes that she can pick any of those books and live those lives where she made different choices. So this is a whole story about her discovering how her life could have been different. I'm already currently reading it and I'm already loving it so Okay, I'm also picking up Pizza Girl. This is totally on a whim, but I just saw it in Steph from Stephanie Bookish's video where she was talking about recent reads and it just looked fun and my library had it. So 
I'm reading Pizza Girl. I barely know what this is about. I think this is a girl that works at a pizza shop who is pregnant, who gets obsessed with a customer and starts following her around. So that sounds really fun. I'm also going to be reading You Should See Me in a Crown, which I've heard amazing things about. This is about a young high schooler who wants to go to college, I think. Her scholarship money falls through, and I think that she realizes that the prize for prom queen comes with a bunch of money. So she tries to become prom queen, but it's also a love story between her and another girl. So I I've heard incredible things about this and I hope I really like it. I'm also going to be reading a bunch of Attack on Titan. Um, I got really obsessed with this last month and I had so much fun reading it that I went to the library and I took as much of it as I could out from the library. So yay. So I also have an arc for She Who Became the Sun, which is a new release that's coming out at the end of July on July 20th. So I'm planning on reading that this month as well. This is supposed to be like Mulan meets the Song of Achilles. Haven't read the Song of Achilles, but okay. Um, and this is a story about uh, a brother and a sister, the brother which who has assigned this wonderful fate and everyone thinks that he's going to be this great hero or something like that, and the girl instead is given this very, like, bland fate, like, you're not really going to be anything. But when this bandit attacks the two children, the brother dies and the girl decides to basically take his place, pretend to be him, and enter a monastery, and she pretends to be a young male novice. Once that sanctuary that she is in is destroyed for supporting the rebellion, um, then she takes the chance to claim another future altogether, her brother's abandoned greatness. So I think this is going to be really fun, really great. I love Mulan, so I think any kind of Mulan retelling is probably going to be a real hit with me. So the only things I really have left to talk to you about right now are the leftovers from last month. So I still am reading Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which I talked about in my last TPR. This is the story of Chanel Miller, who was known as Emily Doe in the Brock Turner rape case, and this is her entire story. She has a very wonderful writing style, so I really want to read this. I also have Wondersmith, which is the second book in the Nevermore series. I'm buddy reading this with Casey from Casey Can Read, and this is following the tale of Morgan Crow. I don't want to say too much about what happened in the first book, because I think that might spoil what this is all about, but so far everything I've read of it has been really great. I'm also still reading the end. What a shock. Basically everything from the book Netathon I'm still finishing yet, but I am reading this, um, having a lot of fun with it, as always. I have The Poppy War, which again, last month, we know, but this is a reread for me. I really loved it the first time that I read it, but reading it physically has totally changed the game for me, and it's already a five-star read, and I'm only on chapter one. So I definitely highly recommend reading this one physically. And then I also have Hood Feminism, which I'm finishing up. I read this for the nonfiction baddies last month, um, but I did not get around to finishing it, unfortunately, before the live show. So um, this is a reread for me as well, but I definitely feel I'm already getting a lot more out of it now because these are just issues that I am much more aware of. So as I read them, it's not like brand new information in my head about food insecurity and gun violence and how these different things affect women of color especially, but instead I can actually reflect on what she's talking about and I can really actually process that information and see um, everything that she's trying to tell me. So I'm also still reading The Seep. Uh, this is the one about a 50-ish year old trans woman whose wife decides that she wants to become a baby again, which is possible because this alien technology or something um, kind of like came down and infected all of the water and everything so that everybody just has this general feeling of being connected to everything all the time and they can totally change their appearance and they can change a lot of things about the way that humanity works. So the wife decides that she wants to become a baby again. The main character is like, please don't do that. And I think that her wife does become a baby, haven't gotten that far yet. And uh, it's her whole experience of dealing with what comes next. And possibly I think going to the compound, which is where all of the people who don't want to deal with the alien seep stuff live. So I think that's it for my TBR right now. Um, I also technically have these like D&D handbooks that I'm going to be skimming. If you want to see what it is that I end up reading, follow me on Goodreads or on Twitter where Goodreads usually posts as well. And I talk a lot more about books over there and I usually post reviews. So if you want to see what it is that I'm reading and what I'm up to, check me out there. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I want to once again shout out Anna Luisa and thank them again for sending me these beautiful pieces and if you would like to buy yourself or a loved one some very cute, wonderful, sustainable, fashionable jewelry, uh, please use Let Me 10 to get 10% off or visit the website that's in the description down below. So thank you again so much for watching. I'm Rachel, this is Let Me in the Library, and I'll see you next time. Bye!